Hey, this is Warren Redlick. A quick video to talk about big news about SpaceX, Starship, and the Raptor engine and Starlink. Are you ready? Let's go. An article published today by Space Explored went through an email that Elon apparently sent to SpaceX staff describing serious problems with the Raptor 2 engine. The Raptor 2 engine is the engine that is supposed to power Starship. They have Raptor 1, which is working on their prototypes. And this relates to Starlink and the Starlink 2 satellite. The Starlink 1 and 1.5 satellites are working. But let's go through this article and it discusses the email in depth. So let's talk about this some more. The big scary part of the story is that Elon said the company could face a genuine risk of bankruptcy if the company is unable to achieve a Starship flight rate of once every two weeks next year. I think this is Elon being over the top. There is no shortage of people willing to invest more money in SpaceX. I'll say this right now, any SpaceX employees, if you're worried about losing value of your shares, send me an email. I'll buy your stock. I've got plenty of people on a list. I have 1,500 people on an email list who want to buy SpaceX stock. If you want to sell your stock, I got people who want to buy it. If you're an investor in SpaceX and you have stock and you want to sell it, I've got a long list of people who want to buy it. So hit me up. I'm happy to talk about that. So I'm not too worried about bankruptcy for SpaceX. I think that's Elon being over the top, trying to motivate people. The article here talks about the status. Starship is down in Boca Chica. They're working on it. They're trying to get it glowing, going. They're having trouble with production of the Raptor engine, which is a special type of engine that has a lot of advantages that we've talked about on this channel before. Uh, Everyday Astronaut has some great videos talking about why Raptor is so special. So Elon announced in this email that Raptor production problems are much worse than he thought a few weeks ago. They've dug into issues. They turned out more, far more severe. So he was going to take Thanksgiving weekend off as his first weekend off in a long time, but instead he will be on the Raptor line all night and through the weekend. Apparently some senior SpaceX employees left the company. If you haven't read the book Lift Off by Eric Berger, it describes the crisis mentality of SpaceX in the early days. I think Elon thrives on having a crisis mentality in his companies so to some extent this is you know creating a crisis mentality i mean it's real there are real problems with raptor don't get me wrong but i think the extent to which he's driving the crisis mentality it's real it needs to be addressed he says unless you have critical family matters or cannot physically return to hawthorne we need all hands on deck to recover from what is quite frankly a disaster and then he says the consequences for spacex if we cannot get enough reliable raptors made is we can't fly Starship, which means we can't fly Starlink satellite version 2. The idea is the Falcon 9 rocket cannot carry the version 2 of the satellite. It doesn't have, it can't have, doesn't have the volume or the mass to orbit to carry satellite version 2. Satellite version 2 is larger and heavier. Satellite version 1 by itself is financially weak, while the version 2 satellite is stronger. The version 2 satellite probably has this inter-satellite laser links, probably is able to handle more bandwidth, more customers, uh, and be able to do a lot more. So that's why, you know, they. this is what SpaceX does. This is what Tesla does. They constantly iterate. They come up with new techniques. They figure out how can we make this with fewer parts? The best part is no part. The best process is no process. So they're spooling up terminal production to several million units a year, assuming that satellite version two will be on orbit to handle the bandwidth demand. The terminals will be useless. Otherwise, they need to be able to get Starship flying with the correct engine so that they can carry the correct satellites into orbit so that they can serve the terminals that are being built. And this is a significant engineering problem. And Elon is drawing his engineering resources, SpaceX's engineering resources. I wouldn't be surprised if he's bringing engineers from his other companies in to say, hey, we got to get this fixed. The newer satellites are larger. SpaceX has been able to save money by being its own launch provider. SpaceX is operating at a major upfront loss in order to build a customer base for the satellite internet constellation. Elon before referred to this as the chasm, deep a deep chasm of, of negative cash flow. I think, I think Elon once referred to this before as a deep chasm of negative cash flow. So then Elon dropped the bomb. What it comes down to is we face a genuine risk of bankruptcy if we can't achieve a Starship flight rate at least once every two weeks next year. I, again, I think Elon's being over the top here. If they achieve a Starship flight rate of once every week next year. Now, once every two weeks next year would be 26 flights next year. Elon just said they were hoping to do 12 test flights next year. 
So it's a little odd that he dropped this bomb right after speaking to a conference and saying they're hoping to have 12 test launches and not launch actual payloads until 2023. So there's an inconsistency here. You just told the guy, I love Elon. I, I love Elon. I'm like one of the world's biggest Elon fans. He just told a conference like a week or two ago, and I have a video about it on my channel, that they're hoping to do 12 test flights next year. 12 test flights would be less than one every four weeks. To suggest they're going to try, try to achieve a Starship flight rate of at least once every two weeks next year. Now, maybe what he means by that is by the end of 2022, they want to have Starships flying every two weeks. And that will enable them to get sufficient payload in orbit in 2023 to make Starlink financially successful. So a lot more in the article. Starship is essential to SpaceX's future. Starship is essential for many reasons. This is really important stuff. One thing I want to add is just a couple weeks ago, Elon said Raptor 2 has significant improvements compared to Raptor 1, but a complete design overhaul is necessary for the engine that can actually make life multiplanetary, and it won't be called Raptor. So right now they're struggling to get Raptor 2 up and running so they can support launches for a period of time, next two, three years. But Elon also has a desire to come up with a better engine design than Raptor. So he's thinking further down the road than this. But right now, for SpaceX to survive financially without having to do, let's say, another funding round at a discount or whatever, they need to get Raptor 2 production running smoothly. This is a huge effort, and this is a typical thing for Elon, is you've got to innovate with extreme urgency. Now, the urgency is we've got to get this Raptor 2 manufacturing down. I think he thought they had, I think a month ago, Elon thought they had really made progress, and it appears that senior management and Raptor production we're not being completely honest or we're not doing things right or something was wrong and some people left the company as a result of this so this is a big deal i just want to say you know critical detail here don't panic straight out of hitchhiker's guide don't panic yes the spacex team will will crack down they will get really work really hard they will innovate with extreme urgency and they will fix this and it will probably take a few weeks before they fix it it might take a couple of months or three months before they get to the point where Raptor 2 production is on pace for where it needs to be. This is an important goal for SpaceX, for Starship to get this going. I don't think this affects the orbital launch test flight because I think that's going to rely on Raptor 1, which uh, the engines are already on the booster, the engines are already on the Starship, so that part's okay. That's just a test, but Raptor 2 is going to make major improvements, I think particularly in cost and the ability to produce at scale so they can produce more Starships and more Super Heavies. Probably will give more thrust so they can get heavier payloads into orbit, which will make it easier to launch large numbers of V2 satellites into orbit. I think this may change the calculation, by the way. In the past, Falcon 9 launches 60 Starlink satellites. I had thought that Starship would be launching 400 Starlink satellites, but if the new Starlink satellites are going to be larger and heavier, then the number of satellites that Starship is going to be launching will be smaller not 60 but probably more like two or 300 instead of 400 because they'll be smaller satellites and again if you're a spacex employee or a spacex shareholder and you're concerned about bankruptcy and you want to sell your stock my email is wredlick at gmail.com i will buy as much as i can and i have lots of friends who want to buy spacex stock i literally get people contacting me at least once a week and i have an email list of 1500 people who all want to buy spacex stock if you want to sell stock, call me. If I can buy it, I'll buy it. If I can't buy it, I've got people who want to buy it from you. So we are not worried. I am confident that Elon and the SpaceX team will solve this problem. If you have any doubts and you're afraid and you want to protect yourself and you want to sell some stock, just let me know. Wredlick at gmail.com. For the rest of you, thank you for watching. Please check out my other videos. Check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. And thank you so much for watching.